uh, for section uh, three, you may want to have up to three pages long or four pages long. Okay, so you got five students uh, per group. Okay, except one student, one group we have four students, but most of you, you have uh, five students. So one student may need only to write around one to two pages long. So it's not really something too difficult to accomplish. Okay, but of course you need to coordinate your work. Okay, uh, so please get uh, discussed among the each of the relevant groups. Okay, if you do not agree with the, or you want to come up with the, something different, for example, on um, okay, on like uh, apa tu? The, I mean, decide what what topic is is. Uh, I mean, for example, if you want to tackle on, if you want to take on the issue of opportunity cost, okay. Or any 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 concept that you find in the syllabus, for example, elasticity of demand, for example. Okay, so you can you can Google that term in Google Scholar and see what articles or what research people are doing on that. Okay, but at the end of the day, I mean, you don't need to focus only on COVID nineteen. Okay, it can be on any other topic. Okay, but at the end of the day, uh, you must have what what are the issues that that you want to study actually. So discussion, uh, okay. So you want to discuss if you want to cover a topic on ESC of demand. So what are the issues there? So how, what is the actual or the the, the empirical uh, issue or I mean a case study or real life example? Okay, that that, that you can look and from the aspect of uh, to uh, ESC of demand. Or maybe on the issue of topic of the production possibility frontier (PPF). Okay, but the thing is, certain certain concept in the principle of economics are not. I mean, you don't have much articles or empirical study on that. Okay, so uh, the easiest one or the most uh, the the easiest one to get uh, resources nowadays are the current issues. Okay, so and you do not need just to focus on Malaysia. Okay, so this is uh, it can be on other countries as well. Uh, on the global uh, issues, and so at the end of the day, we uh, this assignment is just to uh, to see how you make use of the uh, resources. Okay, Google Scholar uh, or any other websites. Okay, to retrieve the article. Okay, and 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 use the article to to relate to the economic issues, uh, especially within the scope of your syllabus. Okay, so uh, okay. So the deadline, okay, you can go to your OL website, okay, I've already uh, created all of these three links in your OL, okay, so the the assignment content framework, meaning your idea, okay, in terms of how you will plan to, to write uh, your assignment, maybe up to one to two pages long, just the, the just the kerangka, okay, the, the framework, meaning what you plan to write for the introduction, okay, basically, like, uh, you can just give me the in term of bullet points okay the main the main things that you plan to to do but meaning when you submit on the 17th of november uh, you already confirmed that you got the materials okay you got the the the, the resources okay so and every group uh, agree to uh, to do on that particular topic okay and then the first draft uh, meaning that 10 pages long okay plus the references okay must be submitted on the 20th, okay, uh, and then uh, sorry, on the 24th, and then the final draft, meaning the final the final report, okay, should be submitted uh, on the 14th of December. Okay, so I think you got uh, more than enough time, okay, more almost more than more more than one month to write a 10 pages assignment. So if you start early, okay, you can do a bit of your Google search. Uh, okay, and remember, okay, one percent only one to two pages long, uh, so it's not really that much to write. Okay, uh, and of course the writing must be in English. Okay, because this uh, our so okay, so uh, all of the uh, three groups okay that that you see here, so one two three belong in one general group, four five six in one general group, and so forth. So if group one, if group one decide one to do another topic so you can communicate with group three, two and three and discuss among yourself okay and at the end of the day uh by the 17th of november which is two weeks from now okay when you submit 
the content. So because this is a group work, so only one person from the from uh, from each group need to submit the need to submit the report. Okay. So and please note uh, on your title on the the name of your work file. Okay. I mean, if you submit uh, in term of uh, Microsoft Word. Okay. So uh, the the file name should also start with the group name. Okay. For example, group one. Uh, or group two and so forth. Okay, group one uh, framework. Okay, so at least I know straight away that that assignment belongs to group one or group two. Okay, so one person per group need to submit the report. Okay, for every uh, draft. Okay, framework draft and also the final the final submission. Okay, so I will just go through. Uh, so meaning if if we have. Uh, one, two, three, four, seven topics, right, in total. So divided, because, uh, meaning uh, all of, I mean, but 21 groups in total, but seven topics, okay? So, so this is just to allow you uh, also to share materials among uh, the groups, okay? So group one, two, and three, you can share your whatever materials that you have. But of course, the writing will be on your own. Okay, so this is also one way to facilitate your to, to make a uh, facilitate the discussion okay so you can create an, another whatsapp group temporary whatsapp group that combine all of the three groups okay so discuss so i'm sure you got plenty of whatsapp groups for this semester but the group will be you know will be uh, not relevant anymore until so it, it, i mean it will just be relevant just for this particular semester so okay so that that is the format so the, the the way that you see here, okay, that this is just the suggestions, meaning uh, it will not be like this detail because you must remember it's only a 10, ten pages long. So you will not have so many sub uh, subtopics under one page, uh, under one section. Okay, so uh, as I mentioned, you have, you're going to have four sections, but because this is only 10 pages long, so maybe one uh, introduction, maybe 1.1, maybe 1.2 the most. Okay, and also section one, section two, maybe 2.1 and 2.2. So, uh, and also section three, maybe 3.1, 3.2. So it, is, it will not be this detail because this is basically from a thesis format. Okay, but uh, you want the, the sections to be divided into four like this. And you and you need to have this, uh, the subsection within each section. Okay, uh, so this is, uh, you need to provide this sort of uh, table of contents okay, in your in your in the beginning of your uh, assignment. So at least I know what is the the subsections uh, within each of the section. Okay, uh, okay. So you might be wondering what is literature review. Okay, literature review is basically a summary of what other people have done in the past uh, studies. Okay, for example, if you download one paper. Okay, so basically literature review is, uh, let's say you, if you got like 10 articles, okay, 10 articles by Mr. A, Mr. B, Mr. C, Mr. D. So literature review is basically just a summary, okay, of what Mr. A has done, what is the main findings. Uh, so, but of course, since this is only a 10 pages assignment, so we don't really expect a lot of this. At least you can summarize in one, uh, one page, okay, what, uh, what others, what, you know the previous studies have done on that particular topic that you that you do okay so this is uh, one of the uh, this is also a very common uh, topic or subsection and uh, you know when you write a research paper okay so when you go to google scholar okay you download any general article okay you will find uh, some uh, in, in many in many of the papers they will have a sections on literature review okay so uh, perhaps I will also upload okay, some materials or you know assignments from my past uh, students okay, on the on undergraduate thesis okay, that contain this literature review. So at least you get and you will get some idea what or how to write literature review. Okay, so I will upload them in your uh, OL okay, soon. Okay, so that's about it. Okay, so make sure you follow the deadline. Uh, you can submit earlier, okay, but I will only check them after the 17th, okay, 24th. So the, the main one I think is uh, before you start is of course to to make sure that, okay, when you submit on the 17th, uh, 
you you know what you're gonna write at the end uh, for for the first draft. Meaning you already confirm on the topic. Okay, so I do not want you to change when you submit. Then say, oh, we cannot do this topic. Not enough materials and whatnot. Okay, so I think you got more than uh, more around two weeks plus. Okay, to discuss. Uh, so all of these three groups. Uh, or you can you can stick to the one that I suggested, or if you want to suggest a different one, okay, you can uh, you can discuss with me. Uh, okay, maybe one representative uh, from from all of these uh, from from the three groups. Okay, can 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 uh, okay. If you want to suggest uh, one topic, okay, and if I see that, but before you suggest, make sure you do a bit of research on that particular topic. Go and see if you can get enough articles or materials to, to write that particular topic and then you come and propose to me if you do not want to do um, the topic that I've suggested okay so okay so I think that that is for the assignment um, part okay okay any uh, question so far Okay, any question so far? So, faham ke? Okay. So, uh, I think 10 pages, 5% five, 5 uh, per group, meaning 1%, 2 pages long, you can do in less than one day in terms of writing. Okay. Uh, so, it's not really, but do not just simply copy and paste. Okay. So, because uh, we have the software, this part, what we call turn in, okay, to check for plagiarism. Okay, so you can uh, at least try to write the material on your own. Okay, grammar error, try to minimize them. Okay, because it's just a two pages long for one person. Okay, so uh, you know, start your research early. If you can finish uh, your article early, so you don't need to, to worry, you know, because you need also to spend time to, to study for your uh, quizzes. Okay, so now we're going to start on topic number four. Uh, so after we finish topic number four, uh, okay, uh, meaning the first test or the first quiz will be uh, will be due very soon. Meaning you're gonna have your first uh, test or quiz, okay, after we finish topic number four, okay. So uh, you can start uh, revising topic one, two, and three, and do uh, do the exercises or look at the test bank which I provided to you on that particular uh, topics, okay. Okay, so uh, the last lecture we covered on the demand and supply, okay, factors that can cause demand to change, supply to change, uh, movement along the curve, okay, factors that can cause the demand curve to shift upward or to, to shift downward and also for supply, okay, and another important concept when it comes to demand and supply is of course the topic of elasticity, okay, in Malay we call it keanjalana, okay, so uh, meaning, uh, so why do we need to calculate elasticity? Okay, um, uh, elasticity is just a measure of how sensitive, okay, how sensitive the customers uh, or the or the producers to changes in price. Okay, uh, if that is if you're talking about elasticity of uh, demand and supply, okay? meaning price elasticity of demand or price elasticity of supply. So the word elasticity in 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 um, in the most simplest way is you want to look at how sensitive, okay? How sensitive are the consumers, or how sensitive are the producers or the sellers to the changes in price, okay? Uh, how the sensitive of the consumer and producers to the changes in price, and how that uh, that that, uh, that I mean, if you are very sensitive meaning a, a small change in price will affect your demand. Or for the supplier, if the supplier is very sensitive in terms of okay, any drop or any increase in the in the price of the product, the supplier mean, uh, or the producer will end up supply more or reduce the supply, okay? So the term elasticity is basically to measure how responsive or how sensitive are the consumers and suppliers to changes in price and how that, uh, will affect the quantity demand and also quantity supply, okay? So that is um, 
the basic concept of elasticity of demand or supply. So we start with uh, the demand first. Okay. Uh, so this is what you learned before. According to the law of demand, when price goes up, okay, the demand will fall. Okay, and vice versa. Okay. So, but the issue is, it's not just uh, quantity increase or quantity decrease when price. Uh, changes, but how much will the changes take place? Okay, so will the change be uh, more? For example, if price increase by ten percent, okay, so if price increase by ten percent, uh, will quantity also increase by? Uh, I mean, if let's say the price increase by ten percent, will demand reduce by ten percent, or will demand reduce more than ten percent, or will demand reduce less than ten percent? So that is the issue of elasticity. So you want to know how responsive or how sensitive consumers are to changes in price. So that is what we, we term the uh, price elasticity of demand. Okay? The word price uh, start first because we are talking about the price because in economy, beside price, we, we also have income elasticity of demand. Okay. Uh, so that one measures how <coughs> demand will change when the income changes. Okay, but the first part, uh, we want to look at price elasticity of demand, mean how demand, uh, we want to measure how much demand will change when the price of that commodity changes. So that is what we call price elasticity of demand. So the changes in demand due to the changes in the price. Okay. So, and the, the word uh, elasticity is, uh, we can, uh, the adjective is elastic, okay, elastic or inelastic. Uh, elastic means very sensitive or very responsive. But if it is, uh, if the consumers are not uh, responsive, are not sensitive to changes in price, we call it inelastic demand. Okay, inelastic meaning uh, not elastic. Okay, uh, but then if you say they are, uh, but if you use the word elastic meaning the consumers are, the, I mean the consumers are very responsive. Okay, for example, if you see uh, uh, a store, okay. Uh, I mean, if you go to a shopping complex, okay, and you see, a, a, you know, a, a signboard, okay, or a sign or a placard or, you know, from in front of the stores uh, that shows 20% discount, okay, for all of the products. Okay, so uh, are you going to go to the, to the, to the, to the, to, the, to that shop straight away and buy, and meaning, are you really, uh, you know, perhaps if that store very seldom uh, give any sale, okay, so even a 10% or 10 to 20% discount means a lot to the consumers. But if that shops almost every, you know, every month they have sale, so regardless how many percent of sale the, the, the shop uh, provide or gives to the consumers, okay, meaning you don't expect consumer to go and, you know, uh, buy uh, a lot from, from that particular shop, okay. So basically the idea of whether the demand is elastic or the demand is inelastic, okay, you can measure by a simple formula. Okay, basically it's just uh, minus plus divide. Okay, it's not something complicated to uh, calculate. Okay, so we want to see whether that uh, if the price changes, okay, and the quantity uh, when there is a change in price and you observe that the quantity changes, uh, but at the end of the day, we want to know how much is the changes. Okay, if is the price, the changes in price is more than changes in quantity or vice versa, and then we can term whether uh, that fall under the uh, definition of whether the demand is elastic or the demand is inelastic. Okay, so and uh, the notation that we usually do uh, or use in uh, to measure elasticity of demand is ED, okay, E stands for elasticity, D stands for uh, demand, okay, when we learn on the supply side, so it will be E uh, subscript uh, S, okay, meaning, meaning elasticity of supply, okay, so, uh, and the, the most general definition, how to calculate elasticity of demand is basically uh, percentage change in uh, quantity demanded, divide by percentage change in uh, price meaning the numerator or the top will be changes in quantity divided by the denominator which is the change in price of that particular group okay 
So if you're talking about elasticity of demand of good X, so it will be the change in the quantity demanded by good X divided by the change in the, quantity, the price of good X. So that is uh, the elasticity of demand for, if you, if you want to calculate the standard or the, the, the general elasticity of demand for one particular good, it would be the uh, using this formula here, okay? So uh, ED equals to percentage change in quantity demanded of X divided by percentage change in the price of X. So quantity will be on the numerator divided by the change in the price. So basically, this is what I mentioned uh, early on. We want to see how much demand will change given changes in the price. So for every 1% change in price, you want to see how many percentage uh, change in the quantity demanded. So then you can see whether uh, if the consumers are very sensitive or responsive to changes in price because the price has to change first, then it will follow by changes in quantity demanded. Okay, so if this value is bigger than this, okay, meaning the price, uh, the percentage change in price is bigger than percentage change in uh, quantity demanded, meaning uh, this value will become small because when you divide something big, Small divided by big, this will become smaller, okay? But if the numerator is bigger than the, than the denominator, for example, this is 20%, this is 5%. So when big divided by small, this value will be big as well, eh? okay? But if the, if the numerator and the de denominator both are the same value, for example, this is 5%, this is also 5%, then you get this one equals to one, okay? So we want to see whether you get uh, what will be the value of your elasticity of demand, whether it is more than one, uh, equals to one, or less than one. Okay, so that is the, uh, the, the, the main part or the main thing that we want to uh, cover, okay, in terms of the uh, elasticity of demand. Okay, any questions so far? Any question so far? Okay, so the, um, let me see. Okay, if you go to the, um, I mean, uh, if you go to your URL, right, because I, I, I uploaded two slides for each topic, okay, so one is from the, the, the main textbook from uh, Arnold, the other one from the, the one that I took from another lecturer, okay, so, uh, but from, from this slide, you cannot see the, this concept of whether the demand, I mean, the value is more than one, less than one, or higher than one, okay, so, this is what you see just now, okay, uh, from the annual textbook, okay, uh, that the formula is basically percentage change in quantity demanded divided by percentage change in price. So in terms of the notation is percentage change, uh, percentage change in QD or percentage in change in uh, price, okay. So, okay, one thing, uh, where is the missing minus sign? Okay, because the demand, the nature of the demand curve is downward sloping. Okay, downward sloping means it's a negative. Uh, so when you calculate the, the slope or the gradient, okay, when you learn mathematics in your secondary school, if the if the the shape of your linear diagram is downward sloping like this, so the gradient or the slope will be negative as well. So when you calculate elasticity of demand, 
okay uh, you will have this uh, when you calculate the the form i mean uh, any hc of demand you will have a negative value meaning negative something okay why because the nature of the demand curve itself is downward sloping okay so any any value that you calculate for elasticity of demand you will get a negative value okay but when you see here why there is no negative value here for example in this example it's only 3.67 okay but meaning that they they remove the negative sign why because when you want to interpret the value of uh, for example here is 3.67 okay we're not interested in the negative value because negative value is just to show that your demand is downward sloping or in other words the negative relationship between price and quantity because as what we learned before in topic number three uh, demand uh, it, for demand p and q is negatively uh, related means when price increase quantity will fall or when price drop quantity will increase so there is a reverse or negative relationship between p and q p increase q fall P for Q increase. Okay, so when you translate that into uh, the calculation for elasticity of demand, you will always get a negative value. Okay, that negative, uh, I mean that negative sign, is only to show that your demand uh, function or the demand curve is downward sloping. So when you want to interpret whether the demand is uh, elastic or not elastic. Okay, we want to uh, avoid or we want to ignore the negative uh, symbol because uh, we do not want to get confused with negative and positive under elasticity of supply. Okay, so we are only interested in absolute value. So the negative symbol is uh, is not cost, uh, is not take in, is not taken into account when you want to interpret the value of elasticity of demand. So we are only interested in the uh, final value, not the negative sign. So that's why when you see here, okay, for example, here you get negative 0 0.04, okay, but that negative sign, okay, we, uh, of course, it will, will always be there, but when you want to interpret, you are not going to look at the negative, you're only going to look at 0 0.04. The negative is just to uh, show that uh, when you talk about demand, because it's downward sloping, P increase Q fall, P decrease Q increase. So that negative will always be there. It's just to um, uh, to show the, the negative or the inverse relationship between price and quantity for demand. Okay. So when you calculate any LST of demand, you will have either the value to be more than one, okay, uh, more than one, less than one, or equals to one. Okay. I think this the, the number one here is missing. Okay. Uh, ED greater than one. So you cannot see the one here. Okay, so uh, if you want to, photo, if you want to edit a bit on the slide here, but I don't think you can edit. But uh, it should be ed greater than one. Okay, if I can uh, do a bit of, uh, if you want to edit or you want you want to put note here, so it should be ed greater than one. I mean, write the word one in your in your notes, or you can if you print out the slide. Okay, so the number one here is missing. So ED greater than one, meaning the demand is elastic. If ED less than one, the demand is inelastic. And also finally, when ED equals to one, we call it the demand is unit elastic. Unit means that it's equals to one. Okay, so more than one, less than one equals to one. More than one means uh, ignore the negative sign. So for example, you only consider 0 0.04. So 0 0.04 is of, is of course, is one okay so we got it it falls under the demand is elastic okay but if you look at the um the example just uh, previously here okay uh the value is 3.67 so 3.67 is of course suppose it's, uh, if you calculate it uh the the right way i mean the the standard way you're gonna get negative 3.67 but for this example the negative is uh is not shown here because you're only interested in the absolute value, which is 3.67. So in this case, uh, it falls under the category of ED more than one, which is demand is elastic, okay? But if you get the value, let's say, for example, like this, 0 0.04, so meaning the value of ED is less than one, so that is categorized under demand is inelastic, ataupun in Malay, we call it tidak anjal. 
This one is demand uh, anjal, tidak anjal, demand anjal satu. Or unit elastic, okay? Uh, so, but we, if you get exactly equals to one, so that falls under the term demand is unit elastic. Unit means equals to one. So, if you recall from my previous uh, slide just now, okay, uh, if the value of the, uh, you can see from this, um, Okay, so if you can uh, look at this formula here, so percentage change in QD over percentage change in price. If the value on the numerator divided by the, the denominator, both are the same value. For example, this is 5%, this is also 5%, then you're going to get the value equals to 1. Okay, but if you, uh, if the value of the numerator, meaning the change in quantity is smaller than the percentage change in price, Surely you will get the value more than one because small divide by uh, sorry, you will get the value less than one. If small divide by big, meaning you will get the value to be less than one. Okay, but if the numerator meaning the change in quantity is bigger than the change in price, meaning the big divide by small, you will get the value to be more than one. Okay, or in other words, demand is elastic. Okay, so how do you calculate them in in the uh, in the actual example. Okay, so in the unknown textbook, so you have this, uh, this summary here, elastic, more than one, uh, or percentage change in QD bigger than price, as I mentioned just now. Okay, and when it is inelastic is when the numerator is smaller than the denominator. Okay, and when it is equal, you call it unit elastic. Okay, the last two are extreme cases, meaning uh, you can also have perfectly elastic or perfectly inelastic demand curve. Uh, sorry, per, uh, perfectly, uh, the, the elasticity is perfectly elastic or the elasticity of demand is perfectly inelastic. So perfectly elastic, the value the value should be uh, infinity. But if it is perfectly inelastic, the value should be zero. Meaning that uh, any changes to the price quantity does not change at all. So that's why it's equal to zero. But uh, infinity means a very small in price will lead to a very, very big change in quantity. Okay, so that will mean that the elasticity of demand will be perfectly elastic or it can go up to infinity, meaning very, very big. Okay, so for example, you see a, just a small change in price. The, the price drop maybe just by, 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 by $1, but the quantity increase could be a lot okay so or yeah uh, the, the the price can change a lot but the quantity remains the same meaning unchanged okay so that so these two extreme cases uh the shape of the uh the okay, first we look at the general shape of the demand curve okay so uh when it is uh elastic okay we uh, we look at the concept or i mean the shape of the demand curve is usually very flat Okay, very flat meaning it is not steep. Lah. Okay, but when it is elastic, meaning the value, uh, sorry, it is inelastic, the value less than one, the demand curve usually very steep. Okay, so and for unit elastic, okay, uh, the if you measure the changes, so usually to to uh, one of the way to see that the ED is equals to one is uh, when the demand curve is not a straight line. Okay, meaning the percentage change in QD and uh, price will be the same value. But the last two cases just now, perfectly elastic, the demand curve is perfectly horizontal, meaning uh, just a bit of the change in price. Okay, of course you cannot see here. Okay, the quantity can go from zero to infinity. Okay, so that is what it is called uh, perfectly elastic. Okay, so maybe just a small change. We cannot see here even just a tiny change the demand can go from zero to uh, infinity okay but perfectly inelastic means no matter how much the, the price change the price can go up or the price can go down okay but the quantity remains at q1 so meaning that the consumer and they just don't don't care about the price changes because the quantity will remain the same so in these two extreme cases we call them perfectly elastic the demand curve is perfectly horizontal or perfectly vertical. 
for perfect uh, if the demand is perfectly inelastic okay so no matter how much the change the q will remain the same so that is uh, perfectly inelastic and if the price slightly change very a very small change in the price the quantity can go from zero to infinity okay so that is uh, the two extreme cases under uh, elasticity of demand okay so of course at the end of the day we want to uh, see how to calculate uh, elasticity of demand okay so so that is what we are interested to 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 see not just the concept alone okay because one of the things that you will be tested okay is the so the the general formula is just the change in if you look at the annual slide uh, again just now Okay, you, you look at this uh, example here on your, okay, so if you if you have downloaded or you have the slides from, uh, from my, from the OL, okay, so you can see here that just a simple example, okay, uh, price, uh, the original point at point A, price is $12, quantity demanded 50, okay, and you move to another point, point B, from point A to point B, meaning the price dropped from 12 to 10. And then the quantity, uh, because it's getting cheaper, so the quantity increased from 50 to 100. Okay. So we use the average of the two prices and average of the two quantities demanded. Okay. So this averaging formula, I mean, if you look at the, the slide from this one, the other slide, I mean, from the other, okay. So the average formula basically is quite simple to calculate, okay? So if you look at this example here, you can see how this is calculated uh, because the annual textbook didn't show the process, okay? They only show this, uh, how do you get 75, okay? But if you look at this uh, slide here, using the averaging formula. So here you got, um, okay, for example, okay, right? Okay, so you have a, a, a situation where the price originally starts at 10, quantity 200, then the price dropped to $5, quantity demanded rises to uh, 300 units. Okay, so how do you calculate less of demand based on this uh, simple information? So you got two prices, 10 and 5, and two quantities, 200 and 300. Okay, so how do you calculate the, the, the averaging uh, I mean, using the average formula. So 200 to 300, okay, meaning is 50%, meaning uh, how do you calculate 50%? Okay, 300 minus 200, okay, divide by 200, you got uh, 50% lah, increase, okay, meaning 100 divided by 200, 100 means 300 minus 200, so you get 100, divide by the old value, 200, so basically, this is basically new minus old divided by old. Okay, so new to 300 minus old 200, uh, you get 100 divided by old value, which is 200. Okay, so just a simple formula. I'm sure you know by now how to calculate percentage change. Okay, so you got 50%. Okay, but if you look from the other uh, aspect, okay, because this one, the, the quantity increase. But if you put, if you look from the other aspect, if you reduce the price, uh, I mean, if you increase the price, the quantity will drop. Instead of from 2 to 3, now become 3 to 2. So 3 to 2 means uh, it's not 50% because 3 to 2 means 300 minus 200, you get also 100, the same. Okay. Uh, but the, the new, the old value now will be 300. Okay. Not 200 anymore because uh, if you're talking about percentage, of course, 3 minus 2, you're going to get negative 100, correct? But, but we're not interested in that negative value. Uh, sorry, 3 minus uh, 2, you, you, you still get uh, 100, okay? But the old value is 300. So 100 over 300, you get 33%. So it's different aspect, okay, in terms of if you want. Uh, so this is uh, how, you, how you observe, uh, you know, from, from the same uh, information, but the changes can be different, okay? 
So the same thing as the price, okay, 10 to 5, a 50% discount because 10 minus 5, you get $5. The old price is 10, so 5 over 10, you get 50%. But if you look from the other aspect, if the price changes from not 10 to 5, but 5 to 10, okay, 5 to 10, now it becomes 10 minus 5, 5, but the old price now is 5, it's no longer 10. So 5 over 5, you get 100%. Okay, so now using the averaging formula, change in quantity divided by the sum of the two quantities divided by two, divided by change in price divided by the sum of price divided by two. So if you recall from the example just now, okay, we have two information, I mean from this uh, example here. Okay, the two prices is 10 and 5. The two quantities are 200 and 300. So 2 plus 3, you get 500. Divide by 2, you get 250. Yeah? Okay, this one. For the for this part, sum of two sum of quantities divide by 2. 2 plus 3 divide by 2, so you're going to get 250. Uh, for the quantity uh, range, meaning uh, 2 minus 300. Okay. So you're going to get, uh, so that will be the first part here. But for the price, okay, the same thing, okay, the, the price changes will be 5 divided minus by 10. But the, the sum of price divided by 2, the two prices, 10 plus 5, 15 divided by 2, you're going to get 7.5. So for the calculation, means uh, the numerator now becomes, what, you, you, can, you, can, you can calculate this on your own, on your side there. Eh? Okay, so for this part, now it becomes uh, 250. Okay, so that will be the, the this part, and here will be uh, 100, okay? So if you want to see how it, it, it looks in your, in the slide, okay? But now for the, uh, for the Okay, but for the last part here, I mean for this one, this will be uh, 5. Okay, and then divide by uh, 7.5. Okay, so what you see here is basically uh, based on the formula that you uh, see here. Okay, okay so 100. Divide by 250, okay, divide by 5, divide by 7.5. So you're going to get uh, the uh, apa tu? 100 over 250, okay, that will be equals to berapa? 0 0.4, lah. okay, here, or 40%. But then 5 over 7.5, it will be 67% or 0 0.67. So 0 0.4 divided by 0 0.67, you're going to get 0 0.597. Of course, the negative sign will be there, okay, because you're talking about uh, demand here. Yeah? So you, you will get a negative value, okay. So 0 point, but what we are interested in the absolute value only, meaning 0 0.597, which is less than 1, lah. okay. Less than 1 means the demand is what we call uh, inelastic demand. Okay, meaning the demand, the, the value of the elasticity of demand is less than one. So in this particular example, uh, okay, how do you interpret 0 0.597? So this is again another important aspect. Note, okay, first you know that the value is less than one, meaning that the demand, the demand here is what we call inelastic demand because the value is uh, the absolute value 0 0.5 is less than one. Okay, so but what what does 0 0.597 means? So uh, the simplest way to explain is that you can say 1% uh, change in price okay, will cost okay, will cost 0.597% uh, change in quantity uh, demanded, okay, the man, okay, 
So that that what's uh so that is what zero point five nine seven means. So a one percent change in price will cause uh only zero point five nine seven change in meaning that the change in demand is less than the change in price. Okay, so price change one percent, but demand only change zero point five nine percent, meaning less than the change in price. That's why we call it uh inelastic demand. If I were let's say to put here this value becomes one. Okay, so when here it becomes also one. Okay, so if the value, if let's say we, we use a different value, and when you calculate, you get 1.597. Okay, so meaning this value is of course greater than one, or we call it elastic demand. Okay, elastic demand. So in other words, uh, a one percent change in price will cause a 1.597 change in quantity demanded, or in other words. Uh, change in demand will be bigger than the change in price. So that's why this, in this case, the demand is elastic, okay? Because the percentage change in demand is bigger than the percentage change in price, okay? So if that is the case, the demand is uh, elastic, okay? And you can visualize the shape of the demand curve will be much flatter. The original value is 0 0.597, the, the shape of the demand curve will be much steeper because the change in the quantity is less than the change in price okay so that is uh the concept of uh elasticity of demand if you want to uh fully i mean if you want to understand the concept of uh okay any questions so far okay uh let's see now it's already 9 40 okay let's see if you can if i can find uh one or two example from the uh from the Okay, one, one more concept that uh, that you need to uh, concentrate, okay? If you look at the annual textbook here, I mean the annual slide, okay? So uh, another way of to uh, visualize the elasticity of demand, okay? So uh, when you look at the standard demand curve, okay, it's a horizontal, I mean, sorry, a downward sloping straight line, okay? When you calculate the, the percentage change in uh, changes in quantity divided by changes in price. Okay, mathematically, okay, so do not assume that this is like your, the, the slope, okay, like the, the, if you calculate the slope of your straight line, okay, the, uh, change in Y over change in X, okay, or if you recall when you, when you learn mathematics in your secondary school, okay, the formula is Y equals to uh, MX plus uh, C, correct, meaning M is the, uh, slope, okay, the slope of your line. And the value of the slope remains the same. When it is a straight line, okay, the value of M is uh, unchanged, okay, meaning the value remains the same. If you get M equals to 3, so Y equals to 3X plus a constant, so the slope, the value of the slope remains the same when it is a straight line. But when it comes to elasticity of demand, okay, do not assume elasticity of demand just like calculating the slope. Slope is different. Okay, because uh, we are talking about the percentage change in uh, the changes in uh, quantity in in, uh, in Y when you divide by the change in X. Okay, the value can actually differ according to the point on the demand curve itself. So here on the annual slide here, you can see that uh, in a standard uh, downward sloping demand curve, if you calculate mathematically, 
Okay, so for example, the scale of the of your quantity here increased by 10 units, 10 units, 10, 20, 30, 40, sometimes until 80 here. And the scale of the price is one, two, three, so it increased by one unit. Okay, so when you calculate mathematically, okay, the range on the on the left side here or on the top is usually what we call the demand is elastic or the elastic range. Okay, somewhere in the middle is when you get the elastic equals to one or unit elastic. Uh, but the, the the bottom part, okay, the, the lower part of your demand curve, the when you calculate the elasticity of demand, the value will be smaller or in elastic range or less than one equals to one more than one okay you can you can calculate this on your own okay and see whether you can get 5.66 or not okay and here you can get 0 0.33 given uh, the, the quantity changes from 70 to 80 and the price changes from two uh, from three to two or two to three okay here eight to nine and then 10 to 20 okay calculate this uh, on your own and see whether you can get 5.66 or not okay using the simple uh, changes in quantity divided by changes in price okay so uh, why I, I show this this uh, this diagram here because uh, one of the common question in um, in, in, in a multiple choice question uh, sample okay is you're gonna be tested on on that as well okay so let's see uh, this example here from the from past year question. Okay, so basically this is what we did, uh, the same set of questions from our previous uh, classes. So we we done this uh, up to question number 17. Okay, so take, take a look at question number 18 here. Okay, uh, the price elasticity of demand of a straight line, demand curve is A, B, C, O, D. So what will be the answer for question 18? Where's everyone? Why everyone so quiet? Semua tengah tidur apa? So you are, some of you chose C, uh, most of you chose C. So why is C, price elasticity of demand of a straight line, demand curve is inelastic. But why, why suddenly you chose inelastic? How do you know it's elastic, inelastic? So this, this actually brings to this slide, okay? On the, top, on the top is elastic, on the bottom is inelastic. So that's what this, um, this uh put this uh this question means okay elastic in high price range and in elastic on low price range so the answer should be a okay meaning uh at high price okay here at high price the demand is elastic at low price the demand is inelastic so most of you got it uh wrong for this one so it should be uh supposed to be uh, a Okay, so, okay, let's look at the second uh, question. Okay, so 
what will be the solution for question 19? Okay, so I think this is uh, simple mathematic. The answer should be A lah. Okay, uh, because the your the formula is change in quantity divided by change in price. So if you got seven means the the numerator divided by uh, denominator, you get seven or seven times. Okay, even if you are unsure A is the right answer, if you go to B, C, and D. If quantity demanded fell by 1%, price would fall. Okay, so this is completely wrong because uh, in terms of uh, the formula, the price should change first, then followed by quantity. You cannot start with the quantity change followed by the price. So that's not how the law works, okay? And B, uh, if the price change by 7%, quantity, so this one is equals to 1 or unit elastic, okay? Uh, so this one, if the price was raised by 7%, demand will rise. So this is, in a way, is wrong because price increase, quantity also increase. So this is uh, wrong, okay? So, but the C is correct in terms of the, the sentence, but this one refers to unit elastic or elasticity equals to uh, 1, not equals to 7. So if the, if the question were to ask uh, U equals to 1, then C should, uh, C should be the uh, correct answer. Okay, we're going to stop at uh, question 20 for the last question. Okay, so what will be the answer for 20? Okay, so the quantity changes from, uh, okay, use midpoint formula. So uh, basically, there are different formulas to calculate, okay, the elasticity of demand, the average formula or the midpoint formula just now. So I think midpoint formula is basically the averaging, the average formula just now. So you take the change and you divide by the average, okay, and then uh, the same thing for the price. You take the, the the range divided by the average, okay? Uh, so you can get so uh, I assume everyone get D so to be the correct answer, okay? So uh, quantity two hundred divided by average of uh, two thousand uh, two thousand six, which is one thousand three hundred, okay? And then uh, so if everyone get D, so I will assume D is the correct answer. Okay, so uh, I, I don't have the answer for this, okay, but if you can prove, if you calculate this uh, yourself, okay, using the average formula that we did so far previously, so 1,200 minus 400, you get 200, okay, so 200 divided by uh, the average between these two, uh, I assume will be 2613, right, okay, 1,300. 
1300 and then uh, divide by the difference between this is two dollars divide by the average between 26 is again 13 yeah i think you should uh, you should get uh, one lah. okay because both are the same uh, value okay so i think uh, that's uh, that's about it for today okay we're gonna continue uh, next thursday okay more on the elasticity of demand and supply okay so please start do your revision on topic one two and three Okay, look at the questions, the test bank which I have uh, uploaded in your OL. Okay, so I will also uh, okay upload some example of thesis. Okay, from undergraduate students so that you can see how the references can be can be done. Okay, uh, the what is literature review and where you can get some idea on 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 that as well. Okay, so uh, okay. So again, the topic, it, it does not need to focus only on Malaysia, okay? You can also do on other countries as well, okay? Not limited to Malaysia. Okay, so uh, thank you. I'll see you next uh, class, okay? Assalamualaikum and good morning. Okay.